Welcome to the double leg. We are going to be going over the exclusive show right now and for UFC Vegas 70. And uh, we'll get right into it because we don't want to waste too much of your time. But if you're watching this before, leave a, a like for good luck. If you're watching this after, hopefully we did well. And you can leave a subscription and a like to learn from or learn more in the future from us. But we'll get it into it right away with the main event. Nikita Krulov and Ryan Spann. In this one, I didn't want to get too invested because I thought it was a bit of a puncher's chance. I will be looking to live bet um, if it goes later in the rounds on Krilov, but we all know Ryan Spann's going to have that insane first round. He's going to come out hot. So I went with Span round one, sub, plus 900 for a quarter of a unit. Span round two, sub, plus 1,400 for a tenth of a unit. And Ryan Span by sub in general, plus 425 for a quarter of a hey. That is all I got on that one. Uh, but like I said, you know, if if Span puts it on him in the in the first round and then you get a good plus money on Krilov going forward, I think that's a route that I'll take and I'll keep an eye on that. But otherwise, I thought Span's definitely gonna be looking for that neck, the guillotine choke. If Krilov comes out wrestling, it's gonna be there. <laughs> If he if Span can crack him in the first round, he likes to dive on the the guillotine uh, or anything he can get his, get his hands on. If he has guys hurt too, so that's uh, that's what I got for the main event. I like it. I, we talked before this that I made my way over to Nikita Krylov in this one, just because like after watching both of them fight, I think Krylov is going to have the tools to kind of stay out of danger uh, of Span. I mean, Span's going to be the stronger dude the more wild, kind of aggressive at times. But overall, man, I think Nikita Krylov is the more solid all-around fighter, the more technical fighter. I think it's going to take him far here. I really do. So I sprinkled a little bit on Nikita Krylov's submission at plus 230 and also a couple of units on Nikita Krylov money line um, just to try to end our night. If I am up a good amount of money heading into this main event, I will hedge and uh, try to find a good play on on span just th that way we make sure we end the night up a good amount of money um because there's a lot of plays on this card that i really like yeah, i just got a good feeling about this card and uh yeah we're gonna hope that krilov can can get it done on my side and if not hopefully they tailed you and span gets it done and you walk away up a metric shit ton of units <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> hopefully that that happens move on to andrew muniz and brendan allen uh this one i do have a good amount of investment in um big on Muniz this week as I know a lot of people are but let's be honest we all know both guys want to get it to the mat and one guy I think has the better jiu-jitsu and uh like he's just really never lost the jiu-jitsu uh match in MMA so I'm, I'm gonna continue to back that I got him at minus 220 for 1.65 units on the money line and then I got him by sub plus 120 for a half a unit and then i got him in two parlays one with mike malott and one with charles johnson and uh trevor peak i like it I, I got muni's in a parlay um just on the money line he's my my final leg of a parlay that is 10 to 1 odds that i really like actually uh, we'll get to the other parts of that in a little bit but I also hedged by taking Allen by decision because it's plus 500. I just hate to see a scenario where Allen can survive the exchanges in jiu-jitsu on the ground in the first round and then come out and just try to keep this thing on the feet and piece him up. Not piece him up, but you know, use some kicks and striking to kind of steal rounds and, and keep the fight where he wants it. Um, it but I, I do see Muni's getting to a dominant position, and once he does, it just kind of scares me a little bit that he couldn't submit Uriah Hall and he had all that time to do so. And it didn't seem like he was too aggressive with the offensive jiu-jitsu in that fight at times. Uh, maybe he'll come out a little bit different than this one if he gets in that position. But for right now, yeah, I don't have a whole lot invested on this one. I do think Muniz gets it done. And if he cashes that third leg of the parlay where I'm about to run down here in a bit, it's going to be a big one. Uh, I forgot to mention the prop plays on that one. Uh, I got... Under two and a half takedowns for Andre Muniz. He's only gone over this twice in his UFC career, and both of those went to decision. Uh, the, 
the line for this to go to decision is like minus or not to go to decision is like minus 250. So yeah. you're betting that it's not going to decision. He's not going to get over two and a half takedowns. I will take that. Um, and then we'll go over the pairing for that later. Next fight, Augusto Sakai, Dante Mays. Uh, very, very greasy one here. <laughs> heavyweight division. I took Sakai by decision plus 275 uh, for a quarter of a unit. I think Sakai wins, but I didn't really want to take him you know, at the chalk. So I just sprinkled a little bit on him by decision because Dante Mays hasn't been very easy to finish. And Augusto Sakai... Um, not like a potent finisher. He's not going to throw a ton of volume, but he can land some powerful shots. And I think Dante Mays just doesn't have uh, the skills to win a decision against uh, a guy like Sakai. So I'm going to take Sakai at the plus 275 by decision for a quarter unit. Yeah, I like it. Um, I could not get to either side on the money line. I mean, the odds are close. You know, you got Sakai been knocked out four times in his last four fights. But if you look at who he's getting knocked out to, it's one of the most prolific knockout artists that we've seen. Um, it's also, you know, guys that are the upper echelon in the UFC right now at the heavyweight division. Um, so the losses aren't like, yeah, he's getting knocked out, but they're not to scrubs by any means at all. And then Don Mays like isn't really dominating lower level UFC heavyweights either. So, um yeah, I, I sprinkled, and I actually actually kind of like this. I sprinkled on Augusto Sakai round one KO at plus 550 and Augusto Sakai round two KO at plus 800 because I believe out of his however many wins he has, he has either nine or 11 KOs. I can't remember which one it was without looking. But he's got a lot of KOs um, compared to how many wins he does have on his record. So he's got the ability. He'll kind of march forward and hit you with combinations. And if he gets Dante Mays hurt, I think he's just going to go for it. He's got nothing to lose at this point. And he's going to have to do it in the first or second. I mean, these heavyweights, we see them in later in fights and they're exhausted. I think that could happen here too. Um, so, yeah, first round or second round, Augusto Sakai, if he hits the KO, we're rolling in it. All right. Tatiana Suarez and Montana De La Rosa. I'm taking Suarez inside the distance and Suarez by sub. Inside the distance at plus 125 for a half unit. Sub is at plus 225 for a quarter of a unit. I think she comes out hot. I think she's been off for three years. She wants to come back and cement herself at the top of women's MMA once again. And I think she can, she can get it done uh, whatever way she wants to. I don't think – I mean, she always goes for the finish – and I would trust her that she does it here. I just don't see a, a way that she goes in there. She's like, yeah, I just I just want to coast to a decision in my first time yeah. back yeah, after all those injuries. Yeah. Um, and I think she gets it done by sub just to, you know, make it clear and concrete. That's probably her best best path to victory. So yeah, I'll take her there. I took Tatiana Suarez as well, but by decision for a smaller play of a happy unit. Just because, like, Montana De La Rosa will be offensive off of her back, and we know she's going to be on her back at some point. Suarez is such a good wrestler. Um, and, you know, all that time off kind of scared me. So I, I just – I could see a world where she gets the takedowns and she's kind of stuck in Montana De La Rosa's guard and she's raining down ground and pound, not, you know, heavy enough in the guard to, to finish the fight. But, you know, drag this thing on all three rounds. I, I could see a world where that happens. So it's just a sprinkle on her by decision. Plus 105 are those odds. Like I said, half unit. Um, yeah, not a big play at all on this one. It's just, you know, women's MMA, you got to kind of tread lightly because sometimes the unthinkable happens. I don't think she's going to lose, but I, I it's kind of tough. It's kind of a coin flip on if it's going to be by submission or decision. I mean. Here we go. Here's the prize picks power play of the week. So I said under two and a half takedowns for Andre Muniz. You're going to pair that. With over 92 and a half fantasy score for Tatiana Suarez. If she gets this, she wins a decision, she could still get this with the amount of takedowns, the amount of submission attempts. Those are highly valued in the fantasy score of, of prize picks. And if she gets a finish in the first round, that's automatically 100 points. Second round, 75 points. Third round is like 50 points or something like that. So I think there you could get. If she finishes it in every, any round or if she wins by decision, you could still hit that over. So I'm going to take that. I like it. 
Um, Mike Malott and Johan Lioness. Uh, I'll let you go first on this one. Just watching these two guys, like both guys have some holes in their game. Like we kind of pointed out on the preview show, Mike Malott gets touched up on the feet a little bit. I mean, against guys like Mickey Gall, I mean, his face was red. I know he's kind of a pale skinned guy and that's all going to show that damage is going to show, but I mean, he does get hit a little bit and Johan hits really hard, but Johan just doesn't throw enough volume for me. And when he does throw volume, he gets tired and he gets tired fast. I mean, in that fight, his debut, he was a favorite or close to it. I mean, I think it was close to a pick but he was the favorite. And I remember taking him and I remember being so disappointed in that gas tank. And then he gets a split decision win. You know, he's not really coming into the UFC doing anything crazy versus Mike Mallott, who comes in and just flatlined Mickey Gall. Like when Mickey Gall hit the ground face first, he kind of woke up. But I mean, that punch was sh- short, it was sharp, and it was super accurate. So I got Mike Mallott on the money line for one and a half units. And I've also got him, I'm sprinkling on him by sub plus 280 and uh, for a quarter of a unit. And I, I think the submission's very possible. I think, you know, maybe he'll feel the power of Johan one time. And then he's going to be looking for the takedowns. And he had a submission earlier in his career where you know, the fight was going to the ground and he had that thing locked in so fast, that rear naked choke locked in so fast. Right when it hit the ground, the dude was was damn near tapping. So I think he's got the skills to do it. Um, you know, he can wrestle a little bit. Uh, we're going to go with that. I'm pretty confident in that one. I like that play a lot. Yeah, I'm on the same side. I got my lot inside the distance, minus 105 for three quarters of a unit and my lot by sub. For plus 250 at a quarter of a unit, and then him paired with uh, Andre Muniz in a parlay for plus 123 for a half unit. Same kind of thinking here. Um, in Lioness's last fight, he looked like he was trying to preserve that gas tank and barely won a split decision. Yeah. Both guys are apparently they're like kind of friends, which kind of scares me for the inside the distance. You know, you might want not want to finish your friend, but like at the same time, uh, I trust that they're professionals and they're going to get it done whatever way they can. Both guys yeah. are violent dudes, so uh, smaller cage, they're going to have to be forced to engage. So I'll take that. Uh, for the main card, I got the no house advantage play under. 30 and a half significant strikes for Krilov, under 26 and a half significant strikes for Muniz, under 65 and a half significant strikes for Suarez, and under 32 and a half significant strikes for Mike Malott. 11 X in our quarter of a unit on that one. Come back to this one. That's smacks. Yes, sir. Eric Gonzalez, Trevor Peak. Uh, I'm on Trevor Peak by KO in this one at even money for three quarters of a unit. And then I got him in the parlay with Muniz and Charles Johnson for plus 277 for a half unit. Um, I just think he's the more durable guy. Both guys are like just dog fighters. Like they just come out there and, and throw with reckless abandon. I think Peak's the more durable guy and he can get it done. Um, if it if it's a battle of wills, I'm going to take Trevor Peak. <laughs> I don't really care um how how it goes but i think he gets it done by ko the submission skills aren't really there he's he's like a he's just a brawler guy that, that's really what he is and so i'll take that at even money uh one last parlay i got in here i got under two and a half for the gonzalez peak fight paired with the fight doesn't go the distance for malat lioness and the under three and a half with krilov and ryan span for plus 115 at a half unit those are three violent fights, and I don't expect them to last long. So I'll throw them in a little parlay at a little over even money there. I like it. Yeah, I'm on the same side, man. Trevor Peak KO. You know, he showed the ability in the contender series to take a big punch in that first round and then just stay within himself and let it work him let it work itself out and then find the own KO of yourself. So I I like him a lot in this by KO. Uh, I actually got it at plus one fifteen the other day. Uh, for three quarters of a unit and i've also got him on the money line in a parlay um which i like a lot but yeah i think gonzalez if he doesn't go out there and finish peak in the first round i think it's peak's fight to win and it's peak's fight to finish so that's all i got on that one i i I like that play a lot i think there's a great possibility he finds that ko and uh he hits hard man i like it gabriella fernandez and jasmine jazz 
I'm going to go with Fernandez on the money line here, minus 130 for a quarter of a unit. I think she's just better wherever the fight goes. As long as she can use her strength and not allow Jasmine to take the fight to her, I think she wins this pretty easily. So I'll take her at the slight uh, chalk money there. How about you? Yeah, no, I've got her too uh, as a slight favorite. We talked before this, man. Got, she just seems like she's got that, you know, more of like a fire or that killer instinct. Um, Jasmine in some fights, I mean, you look at the fight against Kay Hansen. Yeah, she won, but I mean, Kay Hansen, not even in the UFC anymore, not impressive whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, I, finishing ability, um, the stand up, the strength, I think it all goes to Gabby Fernandez here. I like this play a lot, too. I got three quarters of a unit on it because it is women's MMA, and you just never know sometimes. But I'm taking her on the money line, minus 120. Uh, I think it's a good one. Yeah, I wanted to go harder on it, but I'm like, damn. It's and let me backtrack real quick back to Trevor Peak. I forgot. I got yeah. a sprinkle, like a small sprinkle on Trevor Peak round two KO plus 750. Just because, you know, watching the contender series, maybe he gives that first round up. Gonzalez is gassed, and Peak can find that round two KO. So. Also got that on there. I like it. I like it. Jordan Levitt, our our twerk monkey gang. And Mick, Victor Martinez. I think we're both on Levitt. I got Levitt at plus 110 for a unit. Uh, I like that play. Uh, I think he's just the, the better martial artist, I guess you would say. I think he could just implement his game plan uh, a little bit more in this fight and a lot more experience under his belt as well. So I'll take him at slight plus money there. Like he's no, my yeah, yeah. No, my exact thought process too. Um, I, I could see him just getting this fight up against the cage and trying to get takedowns. I mean, if he's taking Patty Pimblet down, I don't see why he's not going to take this guy down. Um, I think he can hold this guy there a little bit better. Patty is way more athletic. So yeah, I think once he gets to the ground too, I mean, he's got a real chance to lock in the sub. I'm also sprinkling on him to win by submission at plus two hundred, but on the money line, three quarters of a unit. I think this is Jordan's fight to win. He's not. He doesn't have to go into London against Patty with the whole crowd against you. I mean, he's not in enemy enemy territory here. I think he's got a lot better shot. He doesn't have those type of nerves. He kind of got that Patty fight out of the way, and he looked good at times in that fight. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah. But you know, this is way more of an even playing field, and he can just relax and go in there and fight this time. So uh, yeah, I got him right at minus one ten. I like that line. Oday Osborne, Charles Johnson. Charles Johnson missed weight, weighed in at 130. Um, so he took the fight on not quite short notice, but like not a ton of notice. So yeah, I gave him a little bit of a pass there. I got the only thing I got in on this one is Charles Johnson with in the parlay with Muniz and Peak. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go harder on Johnson, but then he missed weight, and I'm like, eh, I don't want to get too invested in this one. So I got him. Uh, in the parlay. How about you? I like it. Yeah, no, I got him on the money line of minus 150 a few days ago for one unit. I just think, you know, the length and the striking skills. Um, Ode's dangerous, and but I mean, we saw him get brutally knocked out in his last fight against Tyson Nam. I just think Charles Johnson is one of these guys that you're going to look up and he could rattle off four or five wins in a row. Uh, he's going to have that height. I mean, he's he should have a lot more advantages in this fight and a lot more attributes that, that he can get this thing done also get him in a parlay to win by decision and uh i'll just go ahead and give that parlay out since we're almost done with it it's joe selecki by submission charles johnson by decision and andre muni's money line plus 1000 or 10 to 1 for a tenth of a unit moving right in to the joe selecki carl deaton fight i did not want to touch this one i yeah. liked the joe selecki by submission one but if he if he's not really feeling that submission, like he, he'll just kind of lay on you. Or if he gets, if he's on his back, like he's pretty content to just lay on his back and work for submissions. Yeah. Um. But yeah, not not impressed with Carl Deaton. Not necessarily impressed with Selecki. So I laid off. Yeah. No. I, I was kind of the same way. I just threw him in that parlay. Um. I've also got him in a just a straight money line parlay. Joe Selecki, Trevor Peak, and Tatiana Suarez minus one ten for a, three quarters of a unit there. Just trying to steal one, kind of like a safety net parlay type thing. Um, yeah, I, I think he wins. It's just might be a little greasier than we think, a little closer than we think, but I do think he gets the win. I, I like that almost even money parlay with those big favorites. All right, then the curtain jerker with the Tajik Eagle, Mini Khabib, Narulu, 
Aliyev and Rafael Alves. I got Alves on the money line, plus 168 for a half a unit, and Alves inside the distance at plus 265 for a quarter of a unit. So I thought it was just a little bit too disrespectful for Rafael Alves in this situation. Watching a lot of film on El- Aliyev, he got put in a couple of weird positions uh, on the regional scene, and I'm like, and if if obvious if Alves had that squeeze, I think uh, he might not be yeah. able to get out of it. So I liked it enough uh, to take it. So I'll take it there. And he's powerful. I mean, he's very powerful on the feet. The Tajik Eagle didn't look very good on the feet either. Yeah, so that's yeah. definitely another path to victory there. So I think it's worth uh, the sprinkle on the dog. Yeah, no, I like it. I stayed away because I learned my lesson last week with uh, Hussein Askabov. So nothing on this one for me. But yeah, to your point. Um, Alves, you know, even against Drew Dober early in the fight, he made me a little bit nervous for having Dober. I mean, he's not a bad fighter. I mean, for I was honestly surprised they gave him a guy like Alves in, in oh. uh, Nerullo's first fight because, dude, this is a tough. I mean, that's a tough fight for anybody. Super so, tough. Right? Um, and, I mean, I think the odds show that too. You would expect this guy with some hype coming in um, would be a bigger favorite, and he's just not. So, yeah. No, I, I like that play a lot. A lot. Alves has a, definitely a, a shot to win, and he's definitely a live dog. All right, that is the that's the card. When we see you next, we'll be recapping some USC Vegas seventy, and then the weekend after we got the big card UFC two eighty five. So, at the double egg on all the social medias, and if you're watching here after or before, drop a subscription to support the channel. And if you want to get these plays, uh. Before the fights, you can join the double A premium 1999 per month, so less than a dollar a day. That's all you need for uh, everything you need to know about the UFC card. Till we see you then in the next video, the double egg signing off.